Hi guys. So, boy in the shower. Remember, we had read, we finished yesterday, part one, which was before. So now we are on to part two. We're a good chunk of the way through. Part two, which is now. So I imagine this is what, what Addie's up to at this point. And the previous one was the history, giving us a backstory. Um, so just, just remind yourselves of the before. So remember, there was an old pub that fell down. It had these weird plants growing outside of it. Um, fell down in the night and then other buildings started to fall down. Um, Addie's school ended up closing. Addie's mum is in a really bad state. She finds it tough to get out of bed. Um, and she's really struggling and Addie's really looking after her, but he's alone. Um, someone tried to take him away. Michael's mum tried to take him away to be safe, um, but he wouldn't go with her. Um, everybody, it seems, around Daddy has has gone, has left. Um, and he's really missing Gaia and he's really missing human company. We know now that these plants are the things that are causing the... Um, the buildings to fall and these plants are now infested in the streets and in the last part of the last chapter of part one we know that all the water and the electricity etc in the tower went off so now let's get on to part two now chapter 27 so that's what happened to me that's why I'm still here in my tower, surrounded by bludgers. I wonder if there are other people trapped like us, and I wonder why no one has come to rescue us yet. Like they do on television. If something bad happens to someone on television, somebody always comes along to rescue them. That doesn't happen here. I've been watching the buildings falling. Sometimes it happens right in front of my eyes. I see the surge of the blutches writhing around the base of the building, dissolving the brick layer by layer. Then the walls start to lean just a fraction before it plummets to the ground. There's something slow and fast about the way the building falls. At first it's so slow that it doesn't look like it's happening. And then, suddenly, it accelerates and collapses in one swooping, engulfing crash. The other day I just saw this, one of the smaller blocks fall and just as it started to lean over on itself I saw the door at the bottom of the block open and the tiny figure of someone dashing out. They ran in a diagonal line desperately in lunging strides but in only a few steps they had collapsed from the spores. I could see the body laying and moving on the ground. It looked like it was a woman with short dark hair. She looked a bit like Miss Arnold, but I don't know if it was her. Then the blutches came, one by one, in a blue-silver haze. At first there were only a couple, but as I watched, a group collected together, and for a moment they seemed to pause as if they were waiting for something. Then they covered the body until I could no longer see it. I think about Gaia a lot. I hope that she did escape and that she's safe. I imagine she's somewhere in the countryside. I don't know if it's what Brighton is like, if that's what Brighton is like, but I imagine it is in my head. Somewhere green, where there are lots of trees and not many buildings, where there aren't many blutches anywhere. My mouth feels rough and dry from sleeping. I divide up another orange juice carton and sip at my half with tiny little mouthfuls, but still finish it quickly. Feels like I haven't drunk anything though. My mouth just feels sticky and orangey instead. I open another carton and pour out half and this time I drink it how I want to, in big, loud gulps. I brush my teeth afterwards. It's difficult without water. The toothpaste sticks to my teeth and they feel grainy afterwards, but I like the minty taste. It makes me feel a bit better, although my head is starting to hurt now as if someone is trying to squeeze my brain like it's a sponge. I think it's because I haven't had any water. 
Everyone knows that orange juice is okay, but water is best. We learned about it in school when we grew the seeds. We all need water. And if we don't get it, it's not good. We stopped giving water to some of the little sunflower plants when they were still quite small and they went all floppy, like they couldn't stand up properly. I go to my bedroom to see if I can find my school bag. It's been pushed under my bed, forgotten about. But I find it in the end and pull out one of my topic books. I turn the pages to one of the lessons that was about the time sunflowers went floppy and see the word I'm looking for. It comes back to me now. They are dehydrated, said Miss Faraway. That means that they have not got enough water. What are they? Dehydrated, we chanted back at her. This is how I feel, floppy and tired and my legs don't want to hold me up. I cut out the word from the, from the worksheet. It's in large black letters and I stick it in my scrapbook. I have dehydration. I end up falling asleep, which is funny because I can't sleep properly at night. Now it's daytime and I can't stay awake. But when I wake up, I feel worse, not better. It is weird because you usually feel better when you've had sleep. Mum used to tell me that I was full of beans whenever I woke up from a nap, but I don't feel like that now. My head hurts more and my tongue feels too big in my mouth. It's hard to swallow. Start thinking about our last carton of juice in the fridge. More than anything, I want to drink it. I daydream about sucking it straight from the straw until there's nothing left in it and the carton goes in on, in on itself and makes a funny shape. But it's all we've got left and I have to share it with mum anyway. Suddenly I have a really good idea and I wonder why I didn't think of it before. Michael's mum's flat. I bet she has things to drink in her kitchen. I didn't look around properly when I went in before but there will probably be something that we can drink. I'm sure of it. Michael's mum's kitchen is really tidy and clean. There isn't a pile of dishes that are dirty on this on the side or anything like that. The cupboards have lots of things to eat inside them. Tins and packets and bottles of sauces, those kinds of things. But there isn't much to drink. I only find a bottle of orange squash on the, on the side, which is half empty. But you need to add water to drink it, and I don't know if you can drink it without water. I poke around in some of the other cupboards in the sitting room and there I find lots of bottles of drink. There are about ten bottles and they're all quite big. Some of them look like they have a lot of water in and others look like they are just apple juice. But when I look at them more closely, I see they are I see that they're bottles of drink which only adults have. Alcohol. I'm not picky, it can't be that bad. And I carry them and the bottle of squash into our flat. Takes a few trips. I open one that looks like water and pour it into a cup. It smells sharp. I take a sip, but it tastes like poison and I can't swallow it. I spit it all out, but I can still taste it. I hate it. I have to drink some orange squash without water to make it go away. It's a bit better, but it coats my mouth with a sort of furriness and tastes sweet. I sniff some of the liquids that look like apple juice, but that smells even worse, so I don't try it. I curl up on the sofa and close my eyes. I'm going to fall asleep again, but I'm so, so thirsty. More so than before, I can't stop thinking about lovely cool glasses of water. And then before I know it, I'm dreaming about them. I dream I'm drinking water and then I dream that I'm in a bath and I can drink straight from the taps and the water in the bath even though it's full of bubbles. It's really cold in my mouth but I'm not feeling cold at all in the bath. I feel warm and happy. I'm just about to swim under the water when something jerks me awake. It's a noise. I wake so suddenly that I feel like I'm falling downwards but I'm not really, I'm just lying on the sofa. The noise sounds like shuffling, like someone moving, but it isn't coming from Mum's room. It's coming from outside the front door. My heart is beating fast, like when you run around a lot and then stop and stand still. Your heart goes bam, 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 really quickly. You can hear, hear it in your ears sometimes. 
I know I should go and see what it is, but I don't want to. I sit as still as I can and wait to see if someone knocks on our door and says something, but there is just silence. When I don't hear anything else, I go to our door and open it really, really slowly. I don't know what I expected to see, but I never thought it would be what is sitting in front of me. It's a huge bottle of water sitting there like it's been waiting for me to open the door all this time. There's no note on it or anything, but I know it's for us. Someone's brought it to us. I look sideways down the corridor, but there's no one there. The shuffling sounds I heard have long gone. My first thought is that it's Gaia. I imagine her peering out at me from behind a pillar. I feel like I can see the shape of her hair poking out. Gaia! I imagine saying, and I picture her surprise leaping out, her arms outstretched. Surprise, Addy! I bet you're thirsty now. I keep looking down the corridor, willing Gaia to appear, but after staring for a while, I realise there's no one there but me. Chapter twenty-eight. The water is so. The bottle of water is so big that I have to use both arms to move it, and even then I can only lift it a little way off the ground and have to keep stopping. I half carry, half drag it into the kitchen. I try to pour a couple of glasses without spilling any. It's hard to do because it's so heavy, and it's difficult for me to hold the bottle and the glass at the same time. I manage it in the end, though, and then I'm drinking it. I drink up my whole glass. I drink it so fast that I finish it after only a few seconds and I have to stop myself from drinking mum straight away too. I quickly take her a glass and then I come back and pour myself another. Nothing has ever tasted so good. Sounds silly because I never thought water tasted of anything before. The label on the bottle has pictures of mountains on it. They're green but also have snow on the top. There's a blue sky and a sunshine. I like the picture, so I tear it off to put in my book later. That's when I hear Mum get up. Where'd you get that from? She's asking me. I found it outside, I say. She goes to the kitchen, I hear her try and turn on the taps. It's a squeaky, dry sort of sound. Mum, the taps aren't working anymore. Have some of this water. Why aren't they working? better get them fixed. She yawns loudly and then drinks two whole glasses of water without stopping. She doesn't know, I think. I thought that maybe she may have heard some of the news through the walls or looked out of the window, but she can't have. She doesn't know that everything's changed. I suddenly want to ask her if we'll be all right, but instead I tell her that I tell her that. We'll be all right, Mum. We will be, Addy and she kisses the top of my head. There's a moment as she walks back into her room when she pauses ever so slightly, like she's going to change direction and walk up to the window to see what the world is doing. But she carries on walking and closes the door to her bedroom, and I feel glad that she didn't look. It might be too big a shock to see outside. There's not much left now. Take another glass of water, luxuriating in its wetness as I swirl the liquid around my mouth. Then I start to ask myself, who brought it to our door? Was it the rescue people who had come to get us? Why hadn't they knocked? Why did they only leave us water? I have to go and find them, whoever they are. I leave the flat and walk upstairs. The lifts aren't working, like everything else. I decide I'll walk past every flat from the top to the bottom to find who left us the water. Everyone's door is closed like it always is, so in one way it's the same as any other day when I might go exploring in the tower. But the tower is missing all, all its sounds and smells and seems entirely different. Usually you'll hear kids shouting and mum shouting at them to be quiet and you'll smell what's cooking for dinner or who's making a cake. I feel pretty sure that the flats I pass are all empty. There's no sound or smells coming from them, just a stale kind of emptiness. When I've gone down a few floors from my flat, I catch the smell of something which makes me stop. It smells good, like meat cooking. 
I press my ear against the door where I think it's coming from and listen. I can definitely hear something moving inside. But I don't knock. I just stand there and breathe in the smell. It's the most delicious smell. So good that just having it in my nostrils makes me feel like I'm eating it. Maybe it's chicken. Just like that, the chicken and rice Michael's mum made. Just like that, chicken and rice Michael's mum made that night. I'm thinking about food so much that I don't notice someone come up right behind me. So when he speaks to me, it makes me jump. Are you the kid from 17? I nod, thinking that this is the first person other than my mum that I've spoken to in days. I know him. He's the caretaker for the tower who lives in the basement. He has a gruff sort of sounding voice and he looks like he's a bit mad, but I know he's not from the next thing he does. You look like you could do with something to eat, he says. And then he opens the door of the flat and leads me inside. So he's found another person, the caretaker of the flat, no less. Hmm. I wonder if he's the one who switched off all of the, the water and the electric. I wonder what's gonna come next. I wonder if he's gonna be helpful. I hope so. I'll see you for the next two chapters. Bye, guys.